is a walrus of a man, seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. With a mixture of expectation and impatience, well bought. A typical power play. Wait for him to speak first. Show him you've got a backbone. Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Debardes Union here in Martinez. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately, my health prevents me from getting up. You understand? He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like a torture device. You go ahead, detective. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner as equals. Take a seat. I insist. Very well, Mr. Dubois. I respect a man with strong convictions. I, too, have convictions, one of which is that I will not engage with any man who won't face me at eye level. Should you find yourself more amenable in the future, I'd gladly resume our conversation. But until then, I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. You're no titan of volition, buddy. He's got you in a fork. Sit down or leave. The one good eye of this man fills you up without even flickering. The other, his lazy eye, is constantly moving like a goldfish in a tank. For a moment, you don't know where to look. It is unbearably humid in the trailer. Beads of sweat slide down the man's forehead. At first, nothing happens. His face wears a wide and self-satisfied smile. Every now and then, he smacks his big lips. Like a general over his maps, he plots his moves. Judging by the way he's licking his chops, it's going to be a good one. So... Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi, how nice that you found a moment to pay a visit to the Debardes Union. I'm Everard Clare, head of this little operation here. Please, have a seat. The folding chair looks like a torture device. Extremely uncomfortable. You go ahead, detective. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner as equals. Take a seat. I insist. He's trying to throw you off your game with this Dubois nonsense. Don't give him the pleasure. Very well, Mr. Dubois. I respect a man with strong convictions. I, too, have convictions. One of which is that I will not engage with any man who won't face me at eye level. Should you find yourself more amenable in the future, I'd gladly resume our conversation. But until then, I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. Damn. That's a nasty play. He's got you. A titan of volition. In a fork. Guess you just have to sit or leave. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you're a reasonable man, and reasonable men... Reasonable men can be of great use to one another. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable chair in the world. It's violating your backside. Oh, by the way, 
I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Wow, that's 25 real. That's good money. You need it. Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. No handouts, then. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, Union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. Despair creeps into you, getting fat on your weakness. Whatever noble intentions you once had as a police officer, it's eating them all up now. You're still coming up with sentences. That's a step up from total annihilation, right? Fuck me? I understand this is by no means an easy investigation, but... Nothing you can say would make you feel any better now. Cop gives up the detective genre for social realism. Another police officer resigned from the RCM following a nervous breakdown. He now lives under a bridge, drinking and occasionally throwing excrement at passers-by, shouting, I never loved that woman. When asked to comment, former colleagues objected to the theory that his psychological disintegration was precipitated by his wife leaving him. It's because the furrows lost that match said Captain Patolomy Price, once the man's superior officer. It's because he couldn't get a big gun from acquisitions, and anyway, police word really burns you out after a while. Satellite officer Jean Vitmer, the deranged former cop's partner, commented. Sergeant Matt Torson, another former colleague, did not propose any theories, merely saying, whatever happened to him wasn't about birds. He got fucked, that's all. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable chair in the world. It's violating your backside. Oh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Hey, that's 25 real. That's good money. Think of all the stuff you could. Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. No handouts, then. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, Union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. Oh God, why didn't you think of this before? Cops have guns. Where's yours? It's gone. Your gun is gone. 
There's nothing in your pockets. You don't need a gun. We can still have fun without the gun. The fun doesn't need to stop. Have some right now! Are you all right, Harry? You seem anxious. Don't be. Everything's going to be all right. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. Officer, we will deal with this later. We don't need Mr. Clare's help with this. I wouldn't be so sure about that. God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to cry because you lost your gun and those children are gonna shoot themselves with it. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. What is this Mr. Dubois he keeps repeating? What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Chill. Mr. Dubois! Mr. Dubois! Harry! While Everard is distracted by your odd behavior, the lieutenant's eyes are mapping everything around you. The folder, desk, papers on the wall. Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Maybe you could use your hands somehow, in a kind of throw-in motion, like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. Don't be dramatic. I can see your condition isn't terminal. What an odd demonstration of... Uh, you got me, Harry. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time, and I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. It is about time to stop embarrassing yourself. Questions will help you regain some of your lost dignity. Am I going to ask? Hell, Harry! You spin-kicked my strongest man in the face. I saw it from my window. Would you ask a man like that how he got into your container yard? Don't worry, Harry. Between you and me, I'm not a huge fan of his race thing. But the Union did not get where we are today by frowning on eccentricity. Anyway, I assure you, I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everard, I call you Harry. That's what the hanged corpse called you. Harry. My god, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? I think the odds of that are very low. So good to hear that, Harry. Apparently, my sources were wrong. However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out. With my big fat folder. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. As you look at the folder, 
Evra covers it with his hand and pets it. Is he trying to hide that it's not a real RCM folder? It certainly doesn't have the RCM stamp on it. Okay, Harry, you got me. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census Bureau people are absolutely corrupt. You should do something about them. He got the name from the Census Bureau, and everything else from your actions here in Martinez. Yes, yes, Mr. Kitsuragi, from the Census Bureau. Like I said, now I'm actually a very busy man. So is there anything else I can do for you, Harry? A pity. The mystery of you will have to remain a mystery for the time being. Yes, that's what I said. Try to keep up, okay? Let's move on. You might have noticed there's one hanging on a tree behind the hostel cafeteria. Oh my! Don't take this question personally, but why would I get involved in this matter? Mr. Clare, the man was hanged with a cargo belt. A steel reinforced cargo belt. It's safe to assume the Union had something to do with the murder. Besides, getting the body down would benefit all of us. It's a stain on the neighborhood. I can certainly see how having him up there might start affecting some real estate values. But of course, all joking aside, I am going to help you. Jean-Luc, the cop who bested you in physical combat is here, and he has a little dead body in a tree problem. Namely, he needs it to be taken down. Please extend him this courtesy. You can find Luke down at the gates. But, you already knew that. Anyway, he's going to help you, now that he's back on his feet. Yes, your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of time and effort. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Who knows? Only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to do it. Damn it, Harry. That's exactly what it means. I'm only kidding, of course. He is not. Of course. I understand. We help you, you help us. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to help you like I'm helping you with the body and your lost gun. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines, incredibly talented at opening doors. And I'm sure you're going to open this one with flying colours, Harry. <laughs> this really is very simple, and there's nothing shady about it. Does this jiggling ooze Think he's going to use you? He's got another thing coming. Play his game, son, with your eyes peeled. He's going to slip up, and when he does, you're going to come out on top. 
Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? Oh, no ones. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. A loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. Just go there, unlock the door and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. Harry, my dear friend. I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martinez. Fantastic, my friend. Just let me know when it's done and we can take our friendship to the next level. You can get the key from Manana. He's down by the gates. Manana's like a free agent in the Union. Special operations, hardened socialist, a real free thinker too. He'll tell you precisely where the door is. One last thing, Harry. Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Here. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry.